today I wanted to talk a little bit about revival inside of us. And that's not good, get revived, get refreshed, get get what God has for us, stir up our spirit, man. So I won't be long today, but uh, God is just speaking to me on revival, just reviving our spirit, getting passionate for the things of God so that we can be those that are, are just desirous of the things of God and go out there and win the loss, get out there, share your faith with your family, your friends, and they know that you love Jesus. And it starts with revival in us first, right? Amen. And so I wanted to kind of go over a uh, one of the kings in the Bible who uh, I feel was very passionate. And due to that passion, things were revived and God was brought back in the picture for the Israelites. So we're going to head over to 2 Kings. Uh, if you have our Bible today, just turn there in the Old Testament. 2 Kings 22, we're just going to start there, and I kind of go everywhere, so Becky, if you can't keep up with me, just keep 2 Kings 22, 23 as the main text, but I'm going to kind of be everywhere uh, at different times, so we are going to read. All right, everybody there that wants to be there in the Bible, (laughs) say amen, (laughs) amen. 2 Kings uh, 22. So many of you guys have heard of King Josiah. I have a Josiah of my own, but King Josiah, he reigned when he was eight years old. Could you imagine having that kind of uh, responsibility at the age of eight? But he, his, his father was king and mighty man of God, and here is Josiah. So it says in verse one, he reigned when he was eight years old, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And we'll go down in verse 2. It says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. How many know when you you read the Old Testament, the king, either God said he he did what was good or he did what was evil. When it talks about the kings, everyone was either they did good or they did evil. It was constantly back and forth and back and forth. But Josiah was a good king. And so he says that here. And and it says... um, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and he walked in all the ways of David, his father. And we all know who David is in the Bible, my man of God. Uh, he turned not aside to the right hand to the left. And that is how we should be, correct? We should be serving the Lord with vigor and passion, walking in all the ways of the Lord, not turning to the left or the right, but keeping our eyes focused on the Lord, on straight ahead, on what the purpose and the plan is, what that next step is. And as king, you're always moving forward. You're always pioneering and going forward. Never just staying stagnant, but always doing what the work of the Lord is. And so as we move on, verse 3, it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. So I take it he's probably in his 20s, a little over 20s here, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azeb, is a liar. I'm going to be like, you, Becky, get these words out. We're, we'll just go right past it. But Shaphan, so he sent him, verse 4, it says, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the Lord have gathered. So he's going, he's sending his his servant guy. He's go see Hilkiah the priest. Go see him. I'm going to send you on. This is what Josiah is saying. Go see him. All right, now in verse 8. And this is going to talk about the book of the law. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And so here he's seeing the word of God, and then it came from the house of the Lord. They found it, and he's hearing these words, fresh and anew, okay? So it's like life-giving. And so he's hearing this, and he's like, wow. So here in verse 9, Shaphan the scribe, he came to the king and brought the king word again and told him about the money and everything they were dealing with. And then in verse 10, it says that Shaphan the the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest delivered him a book. Here's this amazing book. From the house of the Lord, there's this book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he rent his clothes. It 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 hit him, right? He just was in awe. He was like, this is what we've needed to hear this whole time. The king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, and 
all those others, moving on, said, verse 13, Go, inquire of the Lord for me and for the people in all of Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. And this is, this is what took him, that he rent his clothes. It says, For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us. Here he's king. He's coming into, he, he's been reigning and ruling for these years. And here's this book, and it says that he found what the law was saying. And the things they've been doing were wrong. They've been serving other gods, okay? They were doing evil, and they were serving idols, and um, uh, there was altars erected, and all sorts of things. And so here it comes in, and he says, um, what verse around 13? Go inquire the Lord for me. Concerning the words of the book, it's found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us. And he, he's hearing these words well. There, there's wrath that's coming. There's coming to us if we don't turn things around. And he says, because our fathers had not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all that was written concerning us. So here they are, their eyes are being made aware that all these idols that are in all these, these towns and all around that they have erected, even in the house of the Lord, things were uh, altars and idols were set up for worship because the Israelites, they allowed other people to come in and influence them. And it wasn't the one true God that was influencing them. So they had things like Baal and Molech and things like that. So they've erected all these things everywhere. And here Josiah is hearing the words of the law saying how it is sinful, that those things need to be eradicated for the land. And if they are not, the wrath of God will come. So he rent his clothes saying, Lord, we, things have got to change. Now, how do you know he had a choice at that moment? Either he could just be a king and be like, you know, it doesn't matter. All Everybody's fine. We're all, we're all worshiping gods, but we're all doing okay. We're making okay. Or on the other hand, King Josiah can say, no, I am going to stand on the word of God. I am going to serve the one true God. And then and which is what he did, King Josiah decided, I am standing for God. I'm not going to allow the wrath of God to come on his people. I'm going to turn things around. And guess what? In that moment, he decided to get passionate. He heard the word of God, and he got passionate. He stirred up his, his spirit man, and he said, I am going all in for God, and no one's going to change me. And we're going to make it right in this land. And God's people are going to serve God and God alone. So how many know King Josiah, it started stirring in him. But it had to start with him, right? It, it, it can take just one person. It can take just you to get that revival starting and stirring and passion inside you. And it took Josiah, King Josiah, to stir up and realize the word of God and wants to come and to follow what the word of God says. So here he is, and he's saying, we're going to follow him. In verse 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and its inhabitants. And just, and he read it. And verse 17, Because they have forsaken me. This is what God's saying. This broke Josiah's heart, King Josiah. He said, They have forsaken me. God's saying this. They burned incense to other gods that they may provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. So God was getting serious in the land. And they found this book. And so now they know. They, they are now aware of what God expects of them. And so he goes on but the, in verse 18. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which you have heard. And this is this is where Josiah came in and his heart was turned towards the Lord and to do what was right. Because, in verse 19, because your heart was tender. You know, that, that's something we need to have is tender hearts towards the Lord. Because, Josiah, your heart was tender and you've humbled yourself before the Lord. I know it's, there's humility involved. No pride, God knock, we gotta not cry it out, right? We gotta come in a place of humility. So a tender heart, um, humility before the Lord, clothing yourself in humility. He did that. When you heard that I spoke against this place and against the inhabitants, that they should become a desolation, a curse, you rent your clothes. It absolutely tore him to the core that he so he rent his clothes. And so it says, 
I also have heard you. Behold, um, I, behold, therefore, I will gather you unto your fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into the grave in peace. And thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. So he wanted to let Josiah know because you made a decision to change and to do something with what you heard. You heard the words of God and you acted on them. I bet you were talking about acting. You know, acting on the word. Don't just stay where you're at. Don't stay stagnant where we're at. But we have to constantly act and move forward. Well, Josiah took a place of tenderness, a place where his heart was uh, and clothed in humility, and he, he walked before God truly sincere and saying, Lord, I want to do what's right. I want to serve you with everything that's within me. And so he continued this. And so we're going to jump into our main text in the next chapter, 2 Kings 23. And this is where Josiah's passion comes in. And he gets that fervor and that 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 tenacity that I am going all in for God. And no one's going to stop me. But it started with him. It started with revival inside his spirit, man, to do something, to act upon the word of God. You know, in revival, uh, the, in the Latin it says, the vivo means to live. And the re is to Again, so we're we living again. We're stirring up those things inside of us. And it started with this time. It was him. It was him rebirthing, getting re-interested, re just excited for the things of God. Passionate, passionate, passionate. How do you know it's fun to be passionate for the Lord, to have that drive? And it starts with us inside, stirring up our spirit man. So 23, 2 Kings 23. Let's read. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. So he's getting, he's getting everybody on board now. He's saying, I'm not doing this alone. We're going to do this together. How nice is that to get that one fiery person in your life that's passionate for the things of God? Who's that one that wants to go uh, tell people about Jesus and has that vigor and that passion? In you? And you know you're drawn to them because they're so excited for the things of God. Josiah was excited. He was passionate. He's like, things are going to change around here. And he got everybody on board. And so he, as king, he got all the elders together, as it says in verse 1. Verse 2, the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, small and great. And Josiah, King Josiah, can you imagine only King Josiah, he read the book of the law to all the people. Could you imagine hearing that? The book of the law. But he read the book of the law to all these people. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And then in verse uh, 3, it says, The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. And these are the things. This is the covenant he made with the Lord. He was passionate, okay? So he said, um, I'm gonna, he's going to walk after the Lord. He's going to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes. So he just keeps going on. He, he's just, he's so in love with God. He's like, oh, I'm going to keep your commandments. I'm going to keep your statutes. I'm going to keep your testimonies. Everything that has to do with you, God, I'm keeping them to the team. And I'm not going to waver from them. I'm going all in. And he says, uh, his testimony and statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. He's hearing them for the first time. And he's saying, I'm all in, God. I'm all in. Nothing's going to distract me. Nothing's going to make me waver. I'm going all in. And that was the heart of King Josiah. And that is what stirred him. And God spoke. And then things started shifting in the kingdom around there. Because they have erected so much evil going on around there. So I want to read a little bit. Once that passion in Josiah got stirred up, and he said, I'm not wavering from this book of the law. There's nothing that can make me waver from it. And he gathered everybody together. And here's the, some of the things. I, and it's, it's just a wild. So I want to go down the line here. So 2 Kings 23. He goes on to say, Verse 4, and the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the doors to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord. So they're bringing this out of the temple of the Lord. This is God's house, okay? Out of the temple of the Lord, all the vessels that were made for Baal. 
Guys, Baal was being worshipped in the house of the Lord. There was idol worship. There was all kinds of evil going on in the house of the Lord. So, how do you know it takes a lot? Josiah said, hey, right here. He said, "Get bring those, bring those vessels out of the house of the Lord right now. And for all the hosts of heaven, he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes unto Babylon. How many you know that's passion right there? Passion for God. No, it's like no other God is going to take the place of my God. I am going to serve the one true God all the days of my life. And no one's going to take his place. So all these idols that were in here, they said they are out of here. So that is what they did. They took them out of the house of the Lord and they got them out of there. In verse 5, it says, He put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places. I mean, they had put priests in place who were uh, worshiping and uh, giving things to false idols. And it wasn't to the one true God. And it was in the house of the Lord. How many know when there's a sin in the camp, you got to get it out. You can't allow that stuff to keep permeating in the house of God. So Josiah, King Josiah had to get it out of the house of God and eradicate it. Get it out. So he kicked them out. So that's what verse 5 says. So he, he put down the idolatrous priests who were not serving the one true God. How many know that's passion? That's passion for God right there. He's like, uh, not in the house of God. No, no. Um, and it goes, in the place around Jerusalem, they burned incense to Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. It, it, it's quite laughable, the things that they had allowed all these years to just slowly creep in. How I many know it doesn't happen overnight when things get creeping? We, we slowly let things in our lives and, you know, little idols and things here, and then we kind of lose our way with the Lord. But you got to be all in and passionate. So they allow those things all to come in and permeate just everything about the house of God, the worship, the praise. It was evil. And Josiah, with his passion for the Lord, hearing the book of the law, said, no more. We will serve the one true God. And let's go, verse 6. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord, from the house of the Lord again, without Jerusalem, unto the book, brook Kidron, and burned it. So he, he brought out all these things, and he burned them. And so passionate, you know, he did. He burned them and crushed them all down to powder. They were pulverized. There was nothing left. He was making a mockery of these gods, saying, you will not rule in this house no longer, but my one true God. How many know that is passion? That's passion for the things of God. Um, and so it goes on down and down again. All the things he did, even down in verse 10 where it says about the um, worshiping Moloch, where they allowed their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. They would give their children for worship. Even that, they, King Josiah eradicated it. He took it all away, burnt everything down, went place to place to place, got rid of the idols and everything, and crushed them down. And he got rid of all of it so that now we have the house of God that things of God are now wants to be reinstated and the people of God can now come to the house of the Lord and worship the one true God. But it took King Josiah to have passion and drive and to want to serve the Lord, but coming in a place of humility. And so my passion is that we do those things that stir up revival inside of us. And it begins with each one of us. And as, as each one ignites that fire in them, as they get the passion, and as we get stirred up, then we share with one another, and then we start coming together, and we worship the Lord, and we praise Him, and God inhabits the praises of His people. And mighty things happen when we come together in unity, when we come together in praise and worship. God wants to move on us, and then he wants us to get out there so that we can disciple people and bring them in the house of the Lord to come in a relationship with him. And so, you know, Josiah was very obedient to the Lord. He listened to the Lord. He, he wanted to hear what God was saying. So he went to the, the priest, and he said, you know, I want to hear what God's saying. And so he would do what God said. He was obedient to the word. And also he was committed to God. He said, nothing's going to shake me. Nothing's going to make me move to the right or the left. I'm steadfast 
I'm moving forward and nothing's going to stop me. <laughs> I'm not going to allow any of the things that the evil of all these people, the things they've allowed to influence their lives, it's not going to influence me. Uh, we're going to influence it and we're going to make this the land that God has honored and worshipped. And also, a few things I just want to kind of go down. The things that King Josiah did. First thing is, he obeyed the word of God. So in our everyday lives, if you can just take it real simple, just are you obeying the word of God? And if you're saying yes, then live it out. Be a doer. In James 1.22 it says, don't be just hearers, right? We need to be doers. We can be in here today and just hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, and not do anything about it and think we're okay. It isn't until we do the word, do the word, take action, is when it's going to accomplish something, right? Just as Sister Becky was saying, you got to get out inside yourself. You got to you gotta do the word. There takes action. And I mean, work is a four-letter word, but work, yeah, it takes something. It takes something on our part to do, right? But when you do the word, God is, it's so exciting. He acts on his word. It's alive. It's living. It's moving. It's breathing. And God can work and orchestrate things when we speak his word. Mountains move when we speak, right? The word of God says, when we say and when we believe, we speak it. Things happen. Um, another thing is, God, he wants us to be a holy people set apart to him. King Josiah was saying, we are going to be separate from all these others. We will serve only the one true God, and that is it. We're going to be separate. And God said that he, we, he wants us to be holy just as he is holy. And that means we need to live a life that's pure before the Lord, right? A right heart, a right spirit within us. And holy means to be pure and sinless and upright. We need, we need lives that are tainted by things tainted by the world that we're not allowing things from the outside coming in and mess taining our spirits because the holy spirit resides inside of us we don't want to taint what's going on we want to give him uh, fresh living water to flow through us so that we can speak the word of god in truth and in spirit also um we are to be uh live in righteousness romans i'm going to kind of go through so you guys can just hear a bit 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so in him we would become the righteousness of God. So we are to be righteous. Now, following on top of that, Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're made righteous and we are justified through our Lord Jesus Christ, by faith, by faith. Now, how many of you guys know that this is a faith walk? It isn't a, a sight walk, it's a faith walk. We walk by faith and not by sight. And the righteous shall live by faith and take God at every word that he says. And King Josiah did that. Now, are we just saying we're taking God's word, or are we actually living God and doing what he's saying? Let, we need to make sure those are lined up, that we're doing what he's saying and acting on it. And when you do it, God's going to move through you. He's going to stir you up, and he's going to light you on fire. You're going to do amazing things for God. But he, we need to be his mouthpieces, his vocal pieces out there telling the world who Jesus is. Tell them your testimony of his goodness and the freedom you had, the breakthrough that you've had, how God's you know, shatter the chains off your life, the bondages, and how true freedom come, and how they can be set free just like you were. And it's all through a man named Jesus Christ. But passion, allow the passion of God to stir up inside of you. Um, also, Matthew 5, 6, it says, uh, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Is it your desire to be Filled with the things of God, or do you just want to live just everyday life and just keep going? Or do you, are you truly hungry for the things of God? It says those who thirst and hunger. It's not just being about hungry only, but 
thirsty, you know. When, man, when you're thirsty and you need that drink, man, you're wanting, you're wanting that water, and it's a hot day, man. That that bottled water looks really good, man. I could chug that right now. I'm so hot, and you know, you're wanting, you're thirsty, and or that meal, and you're like, man, I'm starving. I need that. You know, are we that passionate about the things of God that I say, I want more of you, and nothing's going to stop me, nothing's going to get in my way, and it, but it starts in us, fueling that fire, that passion inside of us, and when you do, man, you're going to be on fire for him in amazing ways, and we need to surrender to the will of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit comes in, he moves, he transforms and he sparks that fire. And then, you know, when we get together, you know, he wants to just move powerfully through us. So we gotta, we got to get passionate and then come together and allow God to move on each one of us. And it's exciting. We're the body of believers. We're the hands and feet of God. And when we can get it together, we're going to take that world by storm. Because King Josiah had to surround himself by, of people, of the elders, of the leaders, and say, we're doing this together. We all on board? Yes? All right, we're going for it. <laughs> and it takes every single one of us to make it happen. No one left behind. It takes everybody. Everybody. All right. And then Acts 2.17, it says, in the last days. In the last days. Are we living in the last days? Why, yes, we are. It says, I will pour out my spirit. How good is that? He will pour it out to us. But are we ready to receive it? Are we ready to see, receive what God actually has for us? He will pour out his spirit on all people. Everybody say all. all. All sounds like all to me. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to get your spirit man in check and ready uh, for him and ready to put your hand to the plow, ready to do the work? Or are we ones that just, I just want to sit on the pew. I just want to be happy where I'm at. I'm safe. Yeah, I'm good. You know, or do I say, yes, Lord, I'm on board. Where do you want to send me? Who do you want me to go speak to? Uh, you know, who can I reach? Lord, give me opportunities. Where's our drive? Where's our passion? Is our passion to pew? Or is our passion to go out there and go do the work of the Lord and be passionate for it? It says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your young men will see visions. How cool is that? How I think I would love to see visions from God just speaking through us and to us. And then the old men will dream dreams. You know, just having that revelation. And, and some of you may have had visions. Maybe some of you have had dreams. They're, they're amazing. They're faith-boosting. They, they draw you close to God. We don't rely on those things. But these are some things that are come in the end times. Signs and wonders. They're very neat for the church. They're so awesome. And God wants to speak to his people. He loves us. And, man, God wants to move on our behalf. He wants us to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. You know, the disciples, they were, they were filled. They were in a time where the Holy Spirit was being poured out. And many, many, many were filled with the Holy, the Holy Ghost. And many were saved and disciples were being made. And many were coming to the Lord. And it took passion. It told the Holy Ghost. And God was moving amongst the people. As they got on fire, he could move more freer and freer and freer to do what he was called to do. And the Holy Spirit does what the Father says. And he hears and he does. So allow the Allow your spirit, man, to be ready to receive what God has. And he listens. He says, we're going to be led by the spirit. Not by this flesh, guy, but led by the spirit. Be listening for what God, uh, you know, maybe where to go. Where can I minister to someone? You know, Lord, I want to hear what to say to this person uh, in the right moment. Open my mouth. Lord. When I open my mouth, you speak through me, Lord. And let it be anointed. Let it be powerful to change people through Jesus Christ. So holiness, righteousness. And you know what? In these end times, guess what? A stand where sin is no longer accepted. We have to say no to sin. We can't patty cake sin. We can't say, eh, it's all right. You have to stand up, right? Say, we are not allowing sin to take over, but we will love you and we will show you the way. We will show you truth. Because the truth, this is the truth shall set you free, right? So we got to give the truth in love. Isn't that nice that even though we live in a world full of sin, we can tell people and point them in the right direction, right? And say, the truth will set you free. Let me introduce you to Jesus, who can free you, who can 
break those chains, those bondages, those addictions, the, heal those wounds, those scars, all those things. God wants to heal them and set you free and let you be a, a person who's alive in Christ, living fully alive. And when, when you start living like that, guess what? People are going to start taking notice. And then they're, they're not going to see that you're just some average Christian out there and that they really don't want to be around. No, that person has passion. They love the Lord. I've seen them change. They're not that same person. You know, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah, let's let them say that about us. That old person we were back in the day, you know, we don't want to hang on to that person anymore. We're changing into the likeness of Christ. It's okay to be different. It's okay not to be that person you were before because he made you fresh and new and he wants to do a new thing in you and stir you up and see what amazing things you can do because he has a perfect will and plan for your life. So just step into it and do it with passion. Revive, let revival start in you and let it spread to those around you because I'm telling you, when you get stirred up, others will be drawn to you. And you know what when they do? Just grab them and say, yes, let's do this together. Get out there. To talk to people. Share your faith with them. Let's bring them into the house of God. Let's get them on fire. Let's get these pews filled. And not just for the pew's sake, but let's get the word of God in people so they can get free and they can serve Jesus and love him and then go reach more people so that they can get free. This is a, a very sin time in this uh, nation and we need to do our part. But just like King Josiah, it takes passion. It takes hunger, steadfastness, a life set apart. We are we're a peculiar people, aren't we? So I'm a little peculiar. <laughs> we're a little peculiar, but that's okay. We've got a message that can transform your life, and I'm going to share it with you. We need to be those people who don't care. We're unashamed, right? Unashamed of what people think. We're going to live for the gospel. We're going to share the gospel with people, and they're going to take notice. And it's going to be contagious. And that's what we want. We want to be contagious believers, right? People are drawn to us. And they see that goodness of God in our life. And they want what we have. You keep it stirred up. You keep your spirit man stirred up. And people will be drawn to you. Because of the goodness of God. And people are going to come to know Christ through your passion and your drive. Now, you're always going to feel that passion. No, there's days you're not going to feel like it. But that's good because we walk by faith and not by sight. It's okay. We're not passionate 24-7. But can we live a lifestyle that is that way? Yes, we can. Now our lives are every day living for God, striving to be like Him, walk in a place of humility, tenderhearted, um, not wavering. Those are just those are just foundational things. That's for every day. But as you continue to allow God to minister to you and you continue to fill yourself with the Word of God, just let Him use you. But you have to speak into people's lives. you got to share your faith. Because when you share it, it stirs your spirit man up. And then that hunger for more comes in. Because you get stirred up when you share your faith. There's an excitement that gets going. And then you want to do it again. You want to do it again and more and more. And you just keep it going. Keep it going. So with that, I just want to share revival. It starts with us. But once it starts with us, it can it, it can spread like wildfire. It can just explosion to the believers. And God wants to pour out in these end times. So he's setting us up for what he what's coming. And revival can be breaking out in spots, but you know, we want to be people who are hungry for the Lord, that our spirit man's ready to receive what he has. And when the Spirit of God comes into the church house, when he comes and just totally invades where people are just feeling the, the weight of the, the Holy Ghost, the anointing in the house, when he's just coming and pressing in, people are being set free and delivered. Things they never thought that they could be free of and are coming to church house and they get free. And they're at the altars and they're crying and they're praising the Lord. People who are quiet are out there shouting for the Lord and those who are louder and you know, boisterous, you know, maybe the natural are down there just weeping. You know, God is going to do a new thing in these end times. And it's it, it's going to be a miraculous sight. It's going to be an amazing sight. But God is going to touch the hearts of people. He's going to come in and do a new thing. And it's time for us to clear those things out of our life that need to be cleared out. 
and then allow him to come in and just do a new thing. And I want more passion for the things of God. Like Josiah, man, he, he didn't stop till it was done. <laughs> he said, we're getting this thing done. We're eradicating everything out of the land that's not God. And I'm going to see that God, the one true God, is served in the house of the Lord. So I want to encourage you guys with that today. Revive your spirit, man. Revive your spirit. Man. Get the passion back. It's exciting to live uh, for God in, in these end days and see how God wants to use you. Just get out there. Open your mouth. Witness. Share your faith and see what God does to you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you this morning, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that the truth sets us free. And I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gives us that freedom. And that there's power in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I pray you stir up our hearts, our hunger. Lord, I pray you stir up the Holy Ghost inside us as we are hungry and thirsty, as our passion is for you, Lord. God, you would fill those in the house today, right now. Just fill them, Lord. Right now, Lord, stir up their spirit. Man. Lord, the gifts and the callings you place in every single one of us, we stir them up. We stir them up for the kingdom's purposes and plans. God, I pray that as we open our mouths, you, you use us as your voice, as your vocal, Lord, that we would speak truth to people. Lord, that lives would be set free. Lord, the broken, the hurting would turn to you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you chose to use us the children of God, to be your hands, to be your feet, to do the work of the ministry, Lord. So, God, I pray that, Lord, you just uh, just ignite that passion in us to go put our hands to the plow, to do the work of the ministry. And, Lord, I pray that there be a, such a joy that comes with serving you. Lord, that we seek your kingdom, that we, we put you as the focal point, that we're serving you, God. We are ultimately serving you in every facet of our life, Lord. So I thank you, God. Lord, we just humble ourselves today. And we say, Lord, use us, Lord. Use us for your glory, Lord, that many may come to know you. In Jesus' name. You all said? Amen. 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 Well, um, with that said, let the revival begin with you. Let it spread. Get passionate. And you, you get you get on fire, I'll be right there with you, locking arms. Let's do it together, and let's go get the world for Jesus and bring them in, get them fed with the Word of God. But Lord bless you guys. We'll see you guys Tuesday night prayer and Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, continue praying for Pastor Brian, believing God for a breakthrough, and then we'll see you in the next service. So Lord bless you guys. Have